a seat. Please have a seat. Elena, I'm telling you, you just, you are just nothing but power. You are just full on power. I mean, just so powerful. And um, thank you. Well, it's good to be in the house of labor. It's good to be in the house of labor. And it's good to be back with the culinary workers. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your fight. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for all you do on behalf of the working people, not only of Nevada, but by modeling what you do, working people all over our country. It is my great honor to be back here with the culinary workers to, to rejoice with you in the accomplishments that you have achieved most recently, but standing in a long line of accomplishments that have always taken place coming out of this very building on behalf of the working people of America. I want to recognize my husband, who is here, the second gentleman of the United States. <laughs> also known as Doug. <laughs> we were here together on October 12th when we were last here. Um, we also have Acting Secretary Julie Sue. Thank you for your leadership. She is always fighting, always fighting. And I know her work from back when when you were doing that work in California. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, a long-standing friend. The senator and I served together as attorneys general of Nevada and California back in the day and then in the Senate together. And you are always, always, Catherine, fighting for working people. So it's good to be with you today. Senator Jackie Rosen, who I was honored to serve with in the United States Senate. I will tell you, I see her when the cameras are on, when the cameras are off, and she is the same person, always talking about how we should care about and thinking about the working people of America and follow through. You know, Jackie is somebody who comes off as being very nice, and she is, but she is cutthroat too. She is, she will not tolerate anything less than a fight when it is for the right reasons and for the right folks who are doing good work. So Jackie, it's good to be with you today. <laughs> Chairman Horsford, Congressman, Ho Congressman Horsford, <laughs> Representative Titus, and Representative Lee, I thank you all for what you do. And then of course, General Ford, thank you for always what you do on behalf of working people. Because the power of the law can be very persuasive when necessary to talk about what is right and what is consistent with the values that we hold dear as enshrined in the Constitution of the United States. So thank you for your work. And, um, and today, I think we should also acknowledge, um, it was 41 years ago today that Senator Harry Reid was sworn in for his first term in the United States Congress. <laughs> And knowing Harry as we all did personally, I think he'd be really proud, and he's looking down in this room at this moment to know that the fight continues. We always talk about that, right? The fight will continue, and the fight must continue. Si se puede. So, so there we are. Um, so let me start by saying this, and I say this as Vice President of the United States. I do strongly believe that the strength of our nation depends on the strength of working people. The strength of working people is the backbone of the strength of our nation. Working people, and in particular, union members, are the reason that anyone, whether you are a member of a union or not, get a weekend, get paid leave, get family leave if you get it. It is Union members and the working people who are members of organized labor, who have always fought and continue to fight for the rights, for the dignity of working people and the dignity of work itself. You know, my mother would always say to me, I don't, she would say, what is this business about unskilled, low-skilled labor? All labor, all work requires a skill. And with that, and understanding that then, one should understand the dignity that rightly comes with working hard and being productive and the need to then value that 
by way of wages and benefits, pensions, workplace safety, all of the things that this union has fought for traditionally and most recently has had a historic win on. It is the work of understanding that especially in these moments in time where you know, a lot of people are feeling really alone. And when you feel alone, you feel powerless. Well, that's part of the essence of the strength of unions, is to remind workers that you are not alone, that you come with people, that people have your back. When we talk about collective bargaining, you know, for those who are trying to break unions around the country, understand this. If you just approach policy and your thoughts from the perspective of what is fair, okay? So we're talking about all negotiations then, don't we all agree, should have a fair outcome. All negotiations should have a fair outcome. Let's just use that as a baseline standard. Who could disagree with that if they are a reasonable person? Okay? Fair outcome. So is it going to be a fair outcome if one worker has to negotiate with a corporation for fair wages, for benefits, for safe working conditions? Is that outcome of that negotiation going to be fair? Probably not. But organized labor, collective bargaining is about saying we're not going to leave that one worker out there by himself, herself. We're going to organize around the collective to use the power of the collective to have an equal voice in a negotiation because we know then, yes, there will be a negotiation, some give and take on both sides, but the outcome will be fair. That's the point of organized labor. That's the point of collective bargaining. It's about fairness. It's a fundamental value that we as a nation say we hold sacred. We foundational principles, fairness, equality, giving people the freedom to live their best lives. That's what this is all about. It's basic, fundamental, foundational to who we say and believe we are as a country. So when I look at the hard work and the sacrifices, the day of action when I was last here, October 12th, and the members here were prepared to do some really hard work in addition to the work you do every day, but to strike, which meant to be concerned in a very deep way about how you're going to be able to pay rent, put food on the table, how long it might take, at what personal sacrifice, at what sacrifice for your children and your family and those who you take care of in your personal life. And you were prepared to do it on behalf of all working people. When I look at the accomplishments that came out of that day of action and the weeks that followed it, and we look, and the acting secretary talked about it, a 32% pay raise over five years. That's historic. That's historic. And by the way, so many of you were on the front lines forever and during the pandemic. It is long overdue. You got a pay raise. Long overdue. I think about it in terms of the historic accomplishment through those negotiations, through your, your preparedness to strike that happened in terms of workplace safety. We've talked about this. I've met over the years with members here in this very hall and had the conversations most recently on October 12th. How you work long hours, you work often, so many, work by yourself at night. You're going into those rooms. What that means in terms of an exposure to harassment and abuse or just somebody just acting like a... <laughs> You know how to fill in that blank. <laughs> you know. And having to put up with that because you're working hard and you take your job seriously. And so what you have accomplished in these negotiations to have the safety buttons now in place. And I was saying to, 
to some of the leaders who are here. I think that it's not only going to be about what you've done for your own members. You guys are setting a new standard for workers across the board. You're setting a new standard. Because, you know, too often in these negotiations, if you are as an individual on an individual basis trying to get what is just right and fair, somebody might be looking at you to say, that's not possible. That's not reasonable. You don't need that. But by accomplishing what you have accomplished here at Culinary 226, you are setting a new standard for workers everywhere of what they now know, because they know the story of what happened here. What they now know is possible, is reasonable, is right, and is achievable. So I came back to say thank you. To say thank you. Because the work that you have done is, yes, about the members of this storied union, but you in the larger movement for workers in America are setting new standards. You are setting new standards. And it is making a difference. And it is making a difference in the lives of people who you may never meet, people who may never know your name, but because of what you have done, they will benefit. And I'll close with another point. You know, what has really uh, kept me up at night, frankly, for the last few years, is this weird kind of approach that some people are pushing about what is the measure of the strength of a leader. And they're pushing this stuff that suggests that the measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down. Instead of what we know, which is that the true measure of the strength of a leader is based on who you lift up. <laughs> who you lift up. That is the measure of the strength of a leader. Who do you lift up? There are people that would suggest that the character of leadership is to have no interest in the lives of other people. When we know the true character, character of a leader is to have some level of curiosity, concern, and care about the suffering of other people and then to do something about it. That's who you are. That's who you are. And so I say thank you, Culinary 226. Thank you and congratulations. When we fight,